right, guys. It is another gray, gloomy, smoky, muggy, buggy day. At least not too hot here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes of New York here on this gloomy Saturday morning, August 28th, 2021. And uh, <laughs> so guys, you know, I, I mentioned yesterday I was thinking about starting a new uh, roundup, the Hopium Roundup. Uh, the hopium, apocalyptic, greenwashing, magical thinking roundup ramp for Saturday, and I, uh, I just don't have the stomach for it. I, you know, I didn't have to go far. You know, the the first story on the mainstream media today, the number one story on the planet, is how New Orleans, New Orleans, is ready for whatever. The Mother Earth wants to hit it with. Well, we will see. Uh, uh, we will know by, I guess, when over the next 36 to 48 hours whether uh, New Orleans was ready for whatever <coughs> an enraged Mother Nature wants to send it. So I guess we'll have to pick that up in a couple of days. And then there was a Another long story, while I'm doing this rant, I'm, I'm looking out at two of these dead ash trees right out uh, the, here in Bugs in a Jar Farm. How many of these dead ash trees do we have, you know, talking about uh, the collapse of the ash trees where billions and billions of these trees are already dead or dying and how they're thinking about uh, turning this train wreck around by bringing some little parasitic wasp over here and un just unleashing millions of these little parasitic wasps uh, that eat these beetles that are attacking these trees. Uh, you know, to turn the the freight train around, and and they actually mention these two words in the in the article. I can't believe it. Whenever I hear these stories about, you know, when they, so, you know, so some invasive pest. This one is from uh, I think where is this little beetle from? Uh, Russia or some, or Asia or somewhere over here causing all this damage and so then what they do is they bring another insect and release it uh, or another insect or amphibian or mammal or whatever uh, to they so they bring another invasive species and purposefully introduce it into an ecosystem that is not used to this uh, invasive species in hopes that the new invasive species will fix the problem of the original invasive species without jumping the shark and, and uh, attacking no telling what other kind of beetle when it's over here. And the two words I always come up with whenever I hear this argument is cane toads. Anybody who does not know the reference to cane toads, there's an excellent documentary. I think you can find it right here on YouTube, simply called Cane Toads. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I wish the, uh, the floodgates and the parasitic wasps good luck, but I just don't have the stomach for it, so, and, and I have... Uh, people coming over for a vegan lunch out of my garden today in a few minutes. So I'm just going to make this one a short and sweet one. I want to thank once again Lieutenant Tom from Vermont. Uh, Tom Insulata, Brother Tom, is an excellent uh, source of, uh, <clears throat> you know, reality. Uh, so we're going to leave the hopium behind and and, uh, you know, all of this hopium 
uh, about getting off of fossil fuels and transitioning into the green economy to save the planet from fossil fuels. <clears throat> this is coming again from those lefties over at Axios. Uh, I was just reading an article from Axios. Anyway, we have another one from Axios. Oh, it's from Andrew Friedman. So I like this guy, Andrew Friedman. Um, he <clears throat> He's showing up all over. What Andrew Friedman is one of the most honest journalists working uh, out there today. He pretty much, as far as I can tell, 100% 100% reports on climate change and, um, and the transition to clean fuels. For a mainstream media journalist, Andrew Friedman is one of the few voices I still depend on. Now, of course, uh, you know, he has to put a little bit of hopium in his stuff, but by and large, Andrew Friedman can be trusted more than most to give us an honest uh, opinion. So what is on Andrew's mind in this article, his latest article, so much for a green transition, carbon emissions from power sector soar. And they start out with this little chart and I'll put the link on here and you can read this short, sweet article yourself. Take it away, Andrew Friedman. <clears throat> Global carbon dioxide emissions from the power sector have surged past pre-corona panic levels to reach new highs. A new report examining trends during the first half of 2021 finds, and then he links you over, you know, to the actual report. But this is Andrew's distillation of the uh, newest reality check. The report from Ember, a London-based environmental think tank, shows that the energy transition that needs to happen to limit the severity and pace of global warming is not taking place fast enough. Hmm. Instead of renewables, the economic recovery, you know, the post- <clears throat> Corona panic. I, you know, they're they're already talking about the post-Corona panic recovery, while ninety percent of the news is still about the. Anyway, uh, instead of renewables, the economic recovery is being powered largely by carbon-intensive coal in many countries, particularly in Asia while clean energy is gaining ground elsewhere, but not at the rate required to meet the Paris Agreement's temperature targets. Yes. <clears throat> Global power sector emissions bounce back strongly from lows seen during the first half of 2020 to reach about 5% higher than the first half of 2019, the report finds. The data indicates that while 57% of the growth in electricity demand compared to 2019 has come from wind and solar power, a large fraction, 43%, has been met by firing up coal power plants especially in China. <clears throat> Growth in clean energy used in many countries failed to keep pace with the increased emissions coming from coal power plants in countries such as China, Bangladesh, India, which we reported on a couple of days ago, Mongolia, and Vietnam, the report states, according to the report, not one single country out of the 63 nations analysts examined has achieved a so-called green recovery for their power sectors, which 
would entail both higher electricity demand and lower emissions. Talk about some magical thinking. When compared to the International Energy Agency's roadmap for bringing global emissions to net zero by 2050, <clears throat> global electricity man demand would need to rise by 50% by 2030 while simultaneously cutting the power sector emissions by 57%. And there you go. There is, uh, well, I guess this is a magical thinking, uh, apocalyptic hopium roundup. Uh, the International Energy Agency suggesting that uh, we're going to see global electricity demand rising 50% this decade, which we are going to see, and at the same time, we're going to cut power sector emissions by 57%. Now, Andrew doesn't get into the whole bright green lie uh, in, in this article, so neither am I. But of course, whenever you're hearing all of this stuff, you have to keep in mind the bright green lie. Uh, about this transition to all of this renewable crap that is 100% dependent on fossil fuels. All of the carbon emissions that are never mentioned anywhere uh, by, these, by these greenwashing uh, blankety blanks. But anyway, that's another rant for another day. It's just keep the deeper layer of the onion. We're just looking, we're lurking, looking at the most surface layer of the onion in this article. This absolute joke that this planet is going to get off fossil fuels, please. Okay, where were we? <clears throat> Most of the emissions cuts prior to 2030 in the IEA's modeling would come from ending coal power. The Ember report notes, bluntly stating, quote, coal power is rising when it needs to be rapidly falling. Do you think so? The U.S. Japan and Australia do not meet Ember's definition of a green recovery with a simultaneous increase in energy demand and decrease in emissions. Though temporary factors such as heavy rains boosting hydropower production did help put Norway and Russia on their way there for now. <clears throat> yes. Okay, who is the king of King Coal? Mongolia. Mongolia had the fastest growth in electricity demand <coughs> of the 24, <clears throat> I'm sorry, of the 64 countries in Ember's analysis. <clears throat> and 77% of its 17% increase in demand is being met with increased coal use. <clears throat> and you can be sure <clears throat> that Mongolia is financing this 77% increase in uh, coal use uh, from China. This is all tied in with the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Okay, what's going on in China? <clears throat> China had a similar increase in its electricity demand compared to 2019 with a 14% increase. This means that even a large addition of clean energy could not keep pace 
with more than two-thirds of China's increase in demand met with coal power. And I'm not going to repeat the one I've, I just had about India, you know, about the bigger pie and all of that. Uh, <clears throat> okay. And so all of this report is just looking at the first six months of 2021. So now we're in the middle of these <clears throat> second six months. By the end of this year, power sector carbon dioxide emissions could be even higher given that such emissions were 7% higher in June of this year compared to the same month in 2019, Ember found. And you need to, uh, this little asterisk here, the report, <coughs> the report left out some countries that might add even more to power sector emissions such as Indonesia and the, and the Philippines. And I think Indonesia is already the fourth biggest uh, carbon emitter after China. Uh, well, no, that would be India. I anyway, Indonesia's right out there. Indonesia and the Philippines weren't even factored in. Uh, they weren't even in the, the, the countries that were studied. If you put just Indonesia and the Philippines, if they had just added those two, uh, these numbers would have been a hell of a lot higher. Uh, you know, Manga Bay reporting every week uh, that Indonesia, in particular, ramping up uh, their use of coal. Okay, <clears throat> but they do have the hopium. So here is Andrew Friedman's. He does have. Uh, a couple, a little bit of hopium here towards the end. <clears throat> there is some uh, hope. There is some uh, hope for those looking for signs. Looking for signs. Yes. <clears throat> of an increasingly robust renewables sector. And that is that for the first and that for the first time wind and solar did produce more than one tenth of global electricity overtaking nuclear power now uh, once again if you get to the big green lie about the fossil fuel inputs and the fossil fuel inputs, the rare metals, the concrete, all of that other stuff, and give an honest report of the bright green lie of wind and solar, uh, of course, all hopium would be dashed on the rocks. So what is the bottom line? The bottom line, <clears throat> according to Andrew Friedman, while wind and solar are on the way up, the increase simply is not fast enough to get to net zero emissions by 2050 and have a chance of meeting the Paris targets. Yes. And we're going to close with uh, Ember's, uh, I guess the lead uh, author, some fellow named Dave Jones, quote, we need to go <coughs> hell for leather. Never heard that term. I like that. We need to go hell for leather on the electricity sector, and we are nowhere close at the moment. Do you think so, Davy Jones? Going hell for leather. Yes, we're going hell. We're going to hell for coal. Is where the electric sector is going. Is going straight to hell. Hell for coal. But anyway, I've got to wrap this up. And uh, 
get ready to go raid uh, the garden for a vegan lunch. And I highly suggest you get out there and raid your garden for your own vegan lunch while you still can. Bye, guys. Oh, yeah, so tomorrow... I'm going to put a note in. Tomorrow we're going to have our Doomsday Sermon. Uh, we are going to listen to... Uh, we're going to hear from uh, some uh, a man I have interviewed here on uh, Collapse Chronicles. Michael T. Clare has a new book out uh, about climate change in the Pentagon called All Hell is Breaking Loose. So tomorrow, uh, check in. Uh, be sure to check in for the Doomsday Sermon where we're going to do a reading from Michael's new book. All hell breaking loose. That's another sermon for another day. Right now, uh, I have to go make some more creamed crack. Bye, guys. That wasn't that bad, little dog. You survived that.